Hello and welcome to coverage of the Central European Disc Golf Championships 2023. This tournament is powered by Discmania. And we are excited to be bringing you final round front nine MPO coverage of our lead card here in beautiful St. Pölten, Austria. I'm Connor Wood and with me, Stanislaus Amann. Hello guys, I'm excited to be here. This is the Central European Championships, a tournament I'm a big fan of. Let's go, we have an awesome lead card. There was two days played already. This is me, leading the tournament on minus 10 for the moment. Flo Lingenhill, national champion of Austria, on minus 5. Five strokes back, another five strokes back, Lawrence Schauhofer. Former Austrian two-time national champion. And the only foreign player here from Hungary, Balint Kasai, on plus two. We saw quite a bit on separation in the first two rounds, as you can see here on the leaderboard. You've managed to provide yourself a comfortable lead, but of course, still a battle left in this final round. Stan, did you have any nerves coming into round three today? As you say, the five stroke lead, it's not too, it's not nothing, you know, but this course is honestly quite demanding so a lot can happen and no lead feels safe here and yet yeah, is some pressure as there's a big home crowd everyone is really hoping for me to win i could really feel that and this whole one it's not a joke so this is a 120 meters with a really tight gap at the end it's kind of a low ceiling shot and the birdie is quite hard to get representing austria Please welcome, The Austrian Eagle takes the tee. Getting us started here for round three. Stan, what are you throwing? I'm going with this no horizon cloud breaker. Pretty overstable flex shot just to make the the low ceiling happen. Was a pretty good shot. I ended up in Much circle's edge. For our final round coverage here, next on the team, please welcome, sponsored by MVP Discos, straight out to our tour. We present in Austria, Florian Flo Ligene! So we just experienced here a classic STP T1 party, tee off kind of. Music is going on, everyone is celebrating the players, and this is Flo Lingenhill trying to chase me down here. He too looks to play that high and wide Anheuser, catching a slightly early fade to his shot, just shy of that late gap. Next yeah, exactly. Well. Comes up quite, a, quite a bit short. Lorenz, always a crowd favorite in Austria. Really a player that can play super hot scores if he's on. So he is trying to, to get a medal here on these championships. But this start is kind of sub-optimal, I would say. Yeah. They so call it, he should throw it higher. So. From Hungary, please warmly welcome, Balint Kassel! As you mentioned, our lone foreigner here each of these competitors representing their home countries. Austria, of course, hosting this tournament at your club, Stan, having three representatives of the four leading the tournament. Balint's first throw here of round three. Yeah, it's quite unfortunate. A lot of the very good Czech guys didn't show up here. So two years ago, it was the last time when this event happened. Jakub Semerad was took down the win there in Hungary this year. Many familiar names like Jakub Semerad, obviously he's in the US, but also Jakub Knapek, Bodan Bilek, Matej Wojtyk, they all didn't show up here in these championships. So our students take, took over the, like, uh, the, the first flight. The lead positions, the momentum of that home course perhaps, allowing you guys to push to these dominant lead positions. We go to flow now. The long putt from deep circle two gives it the height. And in fact, a little bit too much going over the top there. This is Lawrence already putting for a par, just inside the circle. 
getting a really, really nice power prod to start things off, getting some confidence in his spotting as well. Yeah, really healthy putt. We know Lawrence is a great thrower of the disc when his putt is on as well. Definitely very strong player and solid birdie for you there, Stan. Able to snag hole one here. Yeah, that one felt great. Getting a stroke on the card here, pulling even one more away from flow. So I really, I'm really trying to make this this lead secure as soon as possible. I, I don't want to struggle at all or like getting in some kind of trouble here. Not giving up any space for these guys who are all looking to chase you down. Quite a difficult hole and layout, really nice thoughtful uh, basket placement here. Stan, do you know roughly what a par round was rated? Oh yeah. We actually were quite surprised how high it was rated in the end. We tried to make this a challenge, but the power rating was 988, around that, so almost a thousand. And this is hole number two, a par four, the shortest par four on the course at 160 meters, but it has an island green and a layup zone. You can also attack the, the island green on your first shot, but you need to clear at least 140 meters. So most of the field is laying this one up. There's only one, some really far throwers that could potentially reach it, but it's a high risk play. You see you just play that lower speed placement hyzer, the responsible birdie play as you mentioned, and quite risk averse playing that one angle shot as well, fading safely to the fairway. Florian off the tee, opting for a similar over stability. Yeah. Even this layup zone is not that big, so there's a lot of OB on the right side and the woods on the left come in play pretty quickly as well. And Lawrence here, he's trying to stick the island. He's going full attack today. You see him catching a huge fade very quickly to the left. Yeah. Yeah, finding OB, I believe. Yeah, it's just coming up two, three meters short of the safe land so yeah basically we tried just to put up a challenge here the course has over three kilometers in total distance we really extended the obese we will walk through this course now you can re i would be really happy to get your thoughts about the layout but it was really a, a test to everyone as you can see only two players in the mpo field field under par for the moment we see Lawrence there just a little bit wide on the approach. We go to you now, Stan. Roughly how far are you from safety? Yeah, this is about 50 meters from safety, about 70 to the pin. And luckily I was able to <laughs> hit that cone there. So this is a really exposed pin placement as well. There's OB almost in the bullseye. It's, it's really a gutsy play if you're attacking that pin directly as I did here. See Balland playing a very different angle to the green, opting for the spike hyzer does not give it the appropriate width. And he is safe though, correct? Exactly, this is the way more safe play. Forehand play on the other hand, kind of risky. Oh, he goes for the risk and he finds the reward. Florian just draining the eagle from way downtown and look at his excitement. Man. Just takes off for the disc. Wow, what an incredible moment. Oh yeah, this is really getting a stroke back. Honestly, we were thinking about some eagle potential on this hole. We didn't about think about this option. Throwing it in, you see it had the height the entire way. Really a true commitment to giving it a run, whether he intended to or not. That was risking OB to the right had it not caught chains, but right in the heart. Incredible from your current Austrian national champion there. Oh yeah, this was a really special moment. And just like that, he took back another stroke from me. So yeah, just a little weak set here for Lawrence. There's still there's still the excitement in the air after this shot from Flo. I really can remember this moment. Good birdie putt there for Ballant, able to secure that. He's continuing to fight towards that even scoreline and hopefully below it. Lawrence with a little bit of damage there. Single bogey. 
ein bisschen Abstand. Hole 2, despite its shorter distance, did average over par of 4.2. Tell us about Hole 3, Stan. Yeah, Hole 3. Another one with a lot of OB, all the right side and also OB long. Um, there's a really rough woods, wood line to the left. It's about 118 meters, so this is really not a short shot. You need to pull some kind of fairway driver strongly and really need to make sure to not flip it over too much flow here with a really smooth release, basically parks it into bullseye. This looks way easier than it is, honestly. We see you now. Very similar shape, using a little bit more width, but a great speed and height to this. We see that pushing flight and another great line there. Yeah, this was really pushing the OB. It was honestly kind of a scary line, but yeah, I got it really close to the basket here. So the mistake a lot of people do on this hole is just to throw it too safe to the woods on the left. But this is basically part of the design. Let's see if Balint is able to avoid that. We see him go to a little bit of under stability in his disc choice, perhaps to get some more effortless distance, but as a result, flipping up very straight throughout the flight and finding that right side OB, Lawrence here. An extremely straight line, right to the pin and looks to be well within the circle. Yeah, he didn't ri risk the OB at all, just throw it safe all the time. Violent here with his upshot. I remember the thing. Lawrence, a good drive, but certainly not a free putt there. And we see it just a little bit low out of the hand, this elevated basket really requiring a good commitment to the putt, particularly from those longer distances. Stan, you're left with that short look for another birdie. Yeah, as you mentioned, those elevated baskets, especially a lot of those are kind of close to the OB. Or they really make the putting scary. So we have uh, five elevated baskets here on this course in total, three of them to start things off. So it really is a stress test from the beginning. And is the OB lines green uh, an intended theme of the design of this course? Yeah, basically it is. The property is honestly quite open most of the time. So OB just makes everything difficult, more difficult. And yeah, here's hole number four. It's the second shortest of the course. It has a nice little triple man to start off. Bends down to the left. And this basket again, super close to the OB. It's like the concrete line is three meters behind the basket. So once again, you want to stick this one close. Otherwise you're left with a pretty tricky putt. Florian looking to shape the soft flex catches one of the early trees guarding the entrance to the green. That forehand obviously playing against the hillside, reducing some of that danger of fading left with the slope. Stan, we see you play this low and wide with some very smooth ground play. Yeah, I got a little lucky here on the back side of the green, sneaking through the trees. But there's definitely both lines, the forehand, as you mentioned. Maybe even a little bit more open on the end. Lawrence, with a very similar line, comes to rest just by your lie. Balint also opting for the backhand here. But unfortunately, catching the grass rather than that dirt that you see offering way more ground play, he gets caught up early, leaving himself with that long bid just a little bit low. Yeah, here Flo, he's well outside the circle as well, should be like 12, 13 meters. So smooth, great delivery to the chains there. And just a really solid putting stroke. <laughs> Shows off the putter for good measure. Yeah, you can really see now this walking path behind the basket. It's coming in play a lot. I am luckily here not facing the OB on my putting. Able to stick this birdie. Well, 
Lawrence here has a chance to translate. Another great try for Birdie and unfortunately just into the band. He's been giving himself the looks but unable to capitalize. Yeah, so just take that we move over to hole number five. It's the second by four on the course, 190 meters. There's a little bit of a gap to hit at the start, but it's quite close to the tee. So you really should get clean through this first gap. It's a slightly right bending shot to open up and then there's a second gap um, that you need to throw a right bending shot through as well. Once again, it will be pretty close to the basket, so watch out for this. And Florian is here going for a quite an unorthodox line, I would say. Getting that cut roller into the hillside. And that just keeps going. We see that stand up to flat and push straight and left throughout the duration of the roll. He does find Obi, unfortunately. But as you mentioned, quite an untraditional line. And a very touchy one. We see you playing this flat release turnover shot. and looks to be very nicely placed. Well, what disc was that? Yeah, that was my really old favorite PD. I call it the George PD. It's a good friend of mine gave it to me. He's an assistant tournament director in this event, and it's a really flippy PD, so I really like to release that one flat, bend it over to the right, perfectly placed there, as Lawrence did. A really good shot as well on his sidearm. Balint also going to the forehand to shape that left to right. And he just barely manages the ceiling nicely. A long piercing shot. Look to have some good snap on that. Yeah, we have three pretty good licks for Birdie here. Flo is trying to set to settle his par. This is mid-range turnover thrown by myself. I'm ending just inside the circle there. Valent going forehand, forehand here. Finds that late overstable finish to give himself a slightly shorter putt than he otherwise may have had. I believe just outside early circle two maybe. And Florian with a fortunate kick back into the gap after a late release. This hole not quite going his way. Certainly in scramble mode now. Would you say this is scramble mode for Lawrence? Yeah, I'm not sure. He could have thrown a sidearm through the gap easily there he opts to go to the grenade just throws it to be on the right side so he's left with a circle two part there kind of unorthodox again so really those first four or five holes are kind of the ones you want to get they're a little bit easier because of after this hole really the hardest stretch of the course starts i would say And already showing its teeth here, hole five. Florian, just a little bit high right side on those chains. We go to Balland here, actually quite close and looks to be within the circle for his birdie putt. Yeah, also, I'll, also struggling a bit, all my card mates here. Having some problems, so I'm really smelling the chance here to get some strokes, especially on flow, and maybe secure this win. Just able to snack this over the rim. And just like this, I start 5 through 5, which is a really, really hot start. Very happy about this. An incredible pace that you've set so far here in the final round. Really, when they need you to to falter at five strokes of course they can play really well but you're giving absolutely no room for them to catch up even taking two strokes as you mentioned on your closest chaser what do we have here at hole six yeah this is the first of two power fives it's 320 meters it has some bands to the left some bands through the right also a bigger group of trees at the end ob left and right and long so all kind of challenges really a test of distance and also accuracy so you really need to pick your spots opening shots is quite a, a straight shot with some 
finish to the left, so rip it out and uh, let it fade a bit. And you've done just that. Crowd certainly liking that one. We see Balint here. Looks to play with quite a lot of hyzer angle to his release and using various degrees of stability to try and shape that flip up. We see him with a straight pushing flight. So this is a smash. I remember this one. This is at least 140, 150. So really best possible spot for Lawrence here to attack. Some well-deserved knuckles. We see Florian has this one quite nose up that will reduce the distance available to him, but still able to get around those hanging branches. And at this par five, still, of course, a lot of throws to be had to fight for the birdie. We go to balance second shot, opting for the roller, laying it down here in this long park fairway. Yeah, it's not totally flat. So there's some holes and some little marks in the fairway he just stays safe on the right side so roller still kind of unpredictable play on this on this grass i would say but yeah some people like to play it a nice hyzer flip there from florian he saw his slightly compromised position at the edge of the tree line still able to get it up and out nicely Stan, you as well. Just a few meters forgiven out the front of the trees. Yeah, just playing also a safe hyzer here. This is quite a decent position to attack for the birdie. Certainly at 320 meters as a par 5. Not needing too much distance per shot unless you're really trying to push it like Lawrence here. Gives us two bombs and he is way down there on the fairway. So Balint here, really close to the OB on the right, playing a super risky play all over the OB through this backdoor gap here. You can see the basket coming in now and he just gets it back into the safe. He is around circle's edge. Very rewarding shot, but he took the risk. And you're using the more traditional entrance to the green here. Shaping that high turnover, just catching the left side, knocking you down early. Looks like you'll be left with a long look. Florian here opting to the forehand to make that left to right and a little bit short, but a very nice width. Absolutely. Coming up, finding himself inside the circle and also Lawrence here after he hit some branches on his second one, just going on a small pitch forehand, basically parking the hole. Stan, would you say this is circle two? Ah, it's just outside, maybe even, yeah. 25, 27, maybe oh. like this. Certainly giving it a chance there. Do you feel uh, liberated by the points? stroke lead that you have here on hole six i mean or is it still lingering that these guys could catch up i'm really still trying to not do anything stupid just staying smooth not doing any mistakes i know that like a par out might do it but usually on this course if you plan to par you're not paring so there's definitely some bogeys to come for pretty much everyone here on the card at least usually it would so yeah as we see Flo picking one back up. I'm just thinking, yeah. The still played control, played safe, get some more birdies maybe. Flo and Lawrence doing just that, each of them finding their birdies. You and Balint both taking the par here on hole six. And we go to seven. Yeah, this is statistically one of the hardest holes on the course. Like the previous one, very rarely birdied. There's OB on the left side that comes in play on the drive quite a lot. There's also OB on the right side that is not in play that much. There's a bunch of trees in the middle. There's also some trees in front of the basket that make your upshot just that more difficult. 
Laurence here trying to smash his opening shot. This is a pretty good line, but as he say, says, this is just a little bit too high and it skips Obi. You can see he's not happy with that one. Looking to take the opportunity to push the distance here on this par 4. Flo getting a fortunate kick off the right side rough back into the fairway. That does cut down his distance significantly but leaves him with a very open look. And certainly a manageable par will be a difficult birdie though. You hit this high flex line stand. Exactly, trying to play it a little bit more safe to really flex it to not bring the OB in play. But as you say, yeah, if you're just not not close to OB on the drive, it's a really hard birdie. Basically, par is the best I can do from there. Palant as well, very safe to that right side. Although, as you mentioned, one of the most difficult holes. You see Flo here trying to shape this turnover backhand around the corner and once again catching the right side and kicking out to the left. Still very fortunate to once again be left with an open look. Yeah, so players here really just try to make this corner around this little group of birches. Even I go to a really unusual forehand, so I only do this if I must hit some branches. This was about 10, maybe 15 meters of a throw, so I'm left with a quite hard par. Not impossible though. Lawrence looking to smash this one into the green is left with a lot of distance from that left side OB and those guardian trees oh. doing their job well preventing him from getting too close. That will be a very long look for his par save after the OB on the tee shot. We see Balant here scrambling with the forehand roller and an early connection will send him in the wrong direction. But he comes back down the hill to safety. Yeah, exactly. It just rolled up in the OB. The disc turned around, rolled back to the safe. So this is really a quite fun moment. I'm just just trying to laser beam this one to the green, just a little low, getting some kind of skip, but I'm ending up outside the circle here. Long up up. See Balland looking to access the green once again, playing over OB with this sort of backdoor entrance and. Good throw leaves him, looks to be just within the circle on the left side on that Heiser play. Florian as well, rather than opting to try and navigate the low ceiling, looking to go up and over, although not quite the angle he needed to get over cleanly. Yeah, this is a really long look for par Florian here with his glitch. Super close. You see that floaty low speed putter. Just some great air time on that long putt. Lawrence here. Laying it up, doing what he needs to do. A little bit of a chuckle there, I think. Knowing that's both the disappointing and responsible play to choose. The long stepper for you, Stan, I believe, for your par, leaving you a short bogey putt. Yeah, so basically everyone has missed the par chances already, I think. I think this is for bogey as well. Yes. Balint hits it, but just like this, this hole once again turns out as a really hard one as our lead card is not able to score a single par on this one. Let's see if I can save the bogey here. Solid putt there. We saw hole seven, a 233 meter par four, average 4.73. Closer to a par five than a par four as it was played on the day. 
really speaks to its difficulty there, particularly for our lead card. Although no strokes swung between these four, we go to hole eight. This one is a little bit on the easier side, I think. It's just below 200 meters. The opening shot is just a slight turnover. It can be played as a roller as well if you feel aggressive. The basket, although, is tucked back in another group of birches here, so you can um, access the basket on a forehand pretty nicely, but there's a lot of trees still to, to manage. So Lawrence here with a quite decent opening shot has all chances. Florian playing that fighting turnover shot. Maybe a little bit of late stability, but look to come into the ground with a strong Anheuser. See a similar line from you, but doesn't sound like you like it too much. Although a great result, or? Yeah, exactly. In the end, it just flew where I wanted. I was not, not sure about it in the beginning. Just my favorite PD doing what it should do. And Balint here showing us the sidearm line. Just catching some branches, but still, still a chance. Although it's it's quite a hard one from there. Certainly, a lot of these par fours playing as quite difficult. Go to Lawrence here, pushing that forehand. I think a lower release than he intended. Finds the early skip that will cut down on his distance, but leave him with a fairly manageable par. Totally, so here on the second shot on this par 4 you just have some bigger trees to navigate through so there's some huge gaps you still need to pick some kind of line and then throw it to the basket. Forehand definitely the preferable play here on the second shot. Florian looking for just that, plays with the ceiling and gets knocked down, still left with a short up shot. We go to your lie stand, you look for this straight line to the green and kicking off a late tree looks to have perhaps slowed you down quite favorably. Yeah, it was kind of a neutral one. I'm just finding myself on the edge of the circle and I think it would have been quite the same if I wouldn't hit anything. Flow here, quite a touchy layup, settling for par. So now this bigger gap we just saw Lawrence and Flo play through is the, the main gap where you can throw his forehand pretty clean to the basket. Palant with some visible frustration there out of his hand he knew it did not have the line required. You see a great delivery there for your birdie. Able to bounce back after the tricky hole seven and also finding a stroke on your card mates here. Exactly, totally. So this really feels like another step into absolute security. So those strokes on the card are really giving me more and more safety. We are moving over here to hole number nine. running out. Yeah, this is a par 3, 112 meters pretty technical shot there's another gap to hit late in the flight and yeah um, not a lot of birdies on this one as far as I remember I'm playing here a slight flex line just a laser to the green shaping that turnover with such great timing another PD this was actually my FD3, so just flexing it a little bit, is, it's quite played in, but this whole play is really great to this 9-speed um, disc for me. We see Florian here sitting at 7 under here on hole 9. If you include this hole, only 10 remaining in the tournament and sitting eight strokes behind you every hole is important for him now to attack and that one fading out early on him will be left to the left side rough yeah on it, 
Honestly, Florian has not much to lose at this point. You can see Lawrence and Balin are quite far back. Also, the chase cut is not playing too hot. So he can really go full attack here as his second place seems to be secured. Oh, he does just that. He goes full attack, finding metal, but not enough to stick it. A valiant effort, most certainly from the rough. And speaking of rough, we see Balland here. Getting a little touch roller out. Gives himself an open par save. Lawrence in quite a nice position. But unfortunately the putt not connecting off that left side bounce. And you sneak that one in. All the metal in the world, but right in the heart of the cage. Yeah, this is really when the course gives something back for all the hard work I put in the last week. Obviously a lot of helping hand were there as well, but this is really the event I love a lot and I really try to give it all I can. Just like that, the first nine holes of this final round are in the books. Stan, you put an incredible pace on the field at six under developing your lead to 16 under now florian sitting at seven nine strokes behind you Lawrence nine strokes behind him an exciting battle that will be concluded in nine more holes all right this was the front nine this was super exciting it was super fun thank you to have you connor and see you on the back nine <laughs>